Maxine brings the style, but does it have the substance to back it up? Let's talk about it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are back. The Eye of the Storm podcast. Before we get into the main discussion, which is Maxine, I'm going to give you guys movie recommendations. So, Daniel, hello. What's the best recent thing you watched last week? So the, the best thing I watched was Fright Night, which is a 1980s horror comedy about this teenager who comes to believe that his new neighbor is a vampire. And then things spiral out of control from there. It's a classic of 80s horror movie and it should be right up my alley. And I tried several times to get into it and I always bounced off of it. And this weekend I tried again and this time it clicked for me and now I, I adore the movie. It's just a really good light 80s horror, right? It's not really scary, but it's it's basically a good creature feature that kind of goes through all the different vampire tropes and puts them into 80s suburbia. That actually sounds like an interesting premise, to be honest. Just like the paranoia of like wondering if your neighbor is, so you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 things like the neighbor comes around and the mom inv- invites him in, and now he can enter the house, and he can't be entirely sure if he's if he's really the vampire, but he sees like a coffin being brought into the house at night, and he never sees the neighbor during the day. Like there's there's it's pretty clear that he's a vampire, but there's just enough doubt there that he he's unsure what to do about it. And that's kind of in in the 80s suburbia, being kind of paranoid of your neighbors and not really knowing your neighbors and stuff like that. So so there's there's stuff going on in that movie. I don't think I've got too much this week. I've spent I spent too many evenings watching uh, Love Island, which just for anyone that doesn't want to know, it's just like uh, reality TV. Of course, checked out the latest House of the House of the Dragon episodes. Uh, I think we're finally on episode four. Uh, the season has been a little bit slower than last season. It's been a lot of like setup. And stuff like that but in episode four we finally got uh one of the you know, big battles with some dragon fights uh which was epic it's left the world in a very interesting state at the moment with you know uh some key players in very interesting positions obviously you know not going into too many spoilers or whatever but it's finally warming up i think season two is finally warming up uh it's going good and looking forward to checking out more what did i watch to be fair I had, for some reason, I was just searching up movies for my crush. What's her name? Megan Good. Yes, I was just, look, I was just looking for Megan Good movies. I ended up on a film called 35 and Ticking. Which is pretty funny. It's like a rom-com. Um, pretty much four friends above the age of 35 looking for love. And obviously, it's got like Kevin Hart in it, so you know it's going to be like a funny-ish type of movie. So, yeah, literally, that's what it was. That's interesting. But for majority black cast, I think all of them are black, actually. But, um, yeah, that's about it. That was my Saturday. Wow. Big discussion time. So, Maxine, quick synopsis. So this is the third movie in the, what's the, what's the proper name? Is it the X trilogy? Not sure exactly. The trilogy, which is, I'm still, I'm still a bit confused on, like, I understand the connection, but I don't understand the connection at the same time. It feels like it's different universes, but that's a conversation for another day. But sorry. Yeah. yeah Daniel's so, so whatever its proper name is, it's the Ty West slasher trilogy. First part was X, second part was Pearl, and now this is Maxine. I think it's mostly a sequel to the first movie, which follows one of the survivors, Maxine, who lives in Hollywood in the 80s, is trying to break into acting, and and that is when people around her start being killed brutally. And she's basically trying to land her first gig as a serious actress, while at the same time trying to figure out the mystery surrounding her. Um, And the whole thing is basically a very... It's just basically an homage to very sleazy 80s slasher movies. It's it's, it's very grimy. It's, it channels that that vibe very effectively, I think. So what, what are our overall impressions? Infamous to famous coming with a bloody trail is a good way to describe this film. Uh, there were some problems I had with the movie in terms of like the way, um, like just, you know, Christianity's influence on this film, like, and like the cult, the, the mixture of the two felt a bit, it, I don't think it was fully fleshed out especially with her dad because it didn't really seem like it is motivation or yeah his motivation didn't really make sense obviously of course you had the cult and christian kind of being entwined into one so that i didn't really feel like that was kind of fleshed out properly but besides that um i did like how they were trying to convey like you know the saying that i don't know if it's an actual saying but hollywood comes with blood right so I kind of liked, especially there was a scene which I really liked where it was pretty much showed that in terms of Hollywood comes with blood later on. But in terms of like the film itself, I think 
I think it's an all right film. I think it's been an all right experience I've had with the whole franchise because I've seen all three movies. So yeah, I've had like an all right experience. Um, I think it's it's more so the performance which is the highlight of this movie for me. Like, um, what's her name? Pearl's actor, um, Maxine's character. What's her name again? Um, Mia Goth. Yeah, her her performance is amazing. Like when I found out she was actually British, and the accent that she pulled off in this in this movie is amazing. I did not know she was actually British. She sounds like Queen Elizabeth, like literally. But um, yeah, I think it's main more so for me is the performance of the movie than the actual story itself. The story is all right. Um, it's very you know sexual and graphic and gory and like you know slasher vibes. Um, it, it's 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 all right. It's all right. Um, I I liked how they conveyed in terms of like you know the life of you know of being an actor just Hollywood comes with sacrifice big sacrifice and obviously of course it's exaggerated but you know they've had it it does play around with you know the rumors that have been circulating for years when it comes to this type of lifestyle that type of industry like you know the Illuminati and just you know blood sacrifices and you know murder death sex and drugs it comes with all of that so I think that was conveyed all right can I say it was conveyed all right? But, you know, I, I could see the conveyor that they were doing throughout the movie, which I appreciate them for. It it was, I've had a, I've had an all, all right experience with this franchise. It wasn't bad. It was, it was above average. So I think I was happy. I was content with this film. Um, I think I enjoyed it. I think I actually really enjoyed it, to be honest. Uh, despite the third act being a little bit of a mess for me. Overall, I did enjoy some of the movie. Like you said, the performances were really good in this. I really like the 80s style in this. So just to kind of cut you, I think A24 style, like the aesthetics really look so nice. I don't know if you've seen A24 movie. A, is it A24 or A24? Yeah, okay. yeah, they're, they're, they're just, the movie look, it just looks amazing. Usually they get, they have like that old VHS 80s type of look with their yeah. movies. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I think I think they portrayed it uh, really well in this movie. Um, I like the kind of like the themes and the messaging behind it, uh, and just kind of like a quick upfront. I've actually not watched any of the uh, previous movies. Shock! I'm not you know too big into like horrors or whatever. Prior to sort of doing this channel and being forced to watch one too many uh, horror movies, but it did make me want to check out some of the previous movies in the franchise, actually, just because, just more so some of the themes around needing to be a monster to survive in Hollywood. And I think there's sort of lots of really interesting bits in this movie, um, which kind of like touches touches on that and just kind of showing sort of people, people's desire and, you know, what people are willing to do to, sort of, to be within Hollywood. And from what I've read, it seems like it's a continued theme from sort of, all the previous movies. And, you know, you, uh, you guys might have a different opinion on that just because obviously you guys have seen it and I haven't. But it, it seems like from what I've read uh, about the previous two movies, I didn't get a chance to watch it is that it seems like it's been continuing that theme from X to Pearl to Maxine and the, the director or the, the writer uh, has something clearly that he wants to say, which I appreciate uh, in movies. So without so, so without going too deep into it um, prior to the spoiler section, I think I enjoyed it overall. It's really made me want to actually check out the franchise uh, even further. Uh, and I think, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it a little more in the uh, spoiler section. I just want to say quickly, Harvey, when you do watch the franchise let me know what's going on and how what the actual connection is because i paul is a film which kind of gets me confused i don't know if it's actually the character mm -hmm. Maxine's character or if it's the old lady that you'll see in the next movie so yeah for me i think the atmosphere is really the movie strong suit right it really paints this picture of the sleazy 80s and for the opening hook i was going to call it the second coming of showgirls which I think would have worked as well. I don't know if either of you have seen Showgirls, but it's it's very similar. Uh, it's also about like a young actress trying to make it in Hollywood, that sort of thing. And I was really on board with Maxine's journey about trying to navigate all of these minefields of just just living in Los Angeles and trying to break into, into the movie industry and being pursued by a serial killer. Like all of that happening all at the same time and the paranoia and the kind of stoic determination that she has, I think really worked for me. In the second half of the movie, I thought the plot really fell short, where it basically doesn't explore its themes or its ideas very much and kind of just names a bunch of stuff or references it. But I don't think gets into any kind of um, depth or substance with it. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in the, in, in, in the full discussion, but I, th I think it mentions a whole bunch of topics such as the sleaziness and exploitation of Hollywood and, uh, and the ruth ruthlessness with that you need to succeed and all of that, but it doesn't actually tell a story about those things. 
And I think that really holds it back because outside of kind of being enjoyable in the moment, I don't think it does enough to be really good. I think that's the consensus that I got from, you know, exploring this a little bit further was that the previous two movies did it a little bit better in terms of sort of some of the messaging and some of the themes uh, that it was trying to convey. Uh, and again, you guys, yeah. but you guys, but you guys, in terms of like the first two movies, so the first movie is pretty much, um, it's about pornography. So it's them trying to break into the porn industry. That's literally what it, all it is. The second movie is, which is why I kept on saying, I was a bit confused. The second movie is her actually trying to, I, I don't know who her is as in, I don't know, if Maxine is Pearl or if the old lady is Pearl, so I'm not too sure, but it's the same character. So, so I've, I've, I've not seen Pearl and I tried to watch X twice, I think, and mm-hmm. I never I didn't really get into it. Um, I think, but Pearl is the old woman who ki- who is the killer in the first one, right? And yeah, Pearl so is her origin story, right? Yes. So, yeah, so Pearl, yeah, so Pearl is pretty much her breaking into her, her story of breaking into the sex industry, I think, so... From what I can remember, I watched it so long ago, but I think it's her breaking into the sex industry. Continue on the theme with the porn industry, sex industry. That's the first two. And then the third movie is her obviously breaking out of the porn industry, trying to go legit. So it's mm-hmm. well, in actual the film industry. So, you know, the that's how I say I'm a bit I'm, I'm a bit confused. I, it's pretty much there's not going to really be a connection in terms of like the dark side of the industry in the first two movies. So that's not something that you should expect. The third movie, is, it feels like it's own... Um, it definitely it, it there's a build up so you can definitely it con- continues the theme of her breaking out of the porn industry to the film industry that's something that's definitely a continuation but in terms of like in terms of like them exploring the theme of the dark side of the industry in the first two you're not going to get that so the reason i asked about the first two movies is that this movie's villain right maxine's father comes out of nowhere in this movie right it's right. not really it's not really a spoil it's not really he doesn't really come out of nowhere because the clip that you see when maxine's a child you see i think you see that in the first one i think you see that in x right. and i okay. thought that was a pearl by the way i thought that was the old lady so i think you see something like that in x so i think with maxine's dad it it, it the reason why it doesn't really come out of nowhere because maxine's always been like she's always had some sort of evil but like evil nature about herself right in the first movie and well, i think in the first movie she, it kind of comes into her you know kind of comes into fruition but i think with her dad's insertion it was it kind of revealed the root of her violence which was her dad so i don't think i think you would need to have seen the first two in a way to understand that this maxine girl she has a past a very violent you know very violent past so yeah wait wait but she is she is one of the victims in the first movie right she's not the killer she is the victim but then she ends up splattering the old couple i think no she ends up splattering the old lady okay and the second defense yes okay because so look at going at this as somebody who is not who who kind of knows the plot of the first one but hasn't really seen it uh, number one for me the father pursuing maxine as a killer came out of nowhere, right? Like I could see the flashback. I can see that she was being pushed towards acting and towards pursuing a bigger life for herself, right? From a very young age, right? And that's mm-hmm. that uh, kind of propagates through her entire life, right? Why, why she wants to be an actress and stuff like that, why she wants to be famous. But I didn't really understand the motivation of the father for killing all these people because mm-hmm. I thought that would that was all in the first movie. And... I think that kind of hurts this movie that it doesn't establish why, number one, why he's around, number two, why he's after her, and number three, why he why he does what he does specifically. Um, if you, um, Yeah. I, 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 know, I know you mentioned about the flashback clip that they play at the start of the movie. Yeah. How, I, how I viewed it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that what he was saying was that you're going to be such a big star and you're going to be like such a church girl, essentially. You're going to be like, grow up and be like, you know, a big star in something like, like the church world or whatever. And then she then goes on to become a porn star and is then sort of trying to sort of get her break in Hollywood. And of course, he's a preacher, I believe. He's like a, a pastor, he's a, he's a preacher. Uh, and at the time, it seems like sort of Hollywood is on sort of a rise, it's, it's going down sort of this sleazy path. And what, what I got from it was that, you know, people's like children were being sort of no almost like stolen by Hollywood were being sort of no seduced by sort of no, uh, the allure of it uh and when he was like 
kind of kidnapping them and trying to sort of try, trying to speak to them. It was he was trying to sort of get them to kind of announce it or sort of kind of like move away from it. I, I can't remember exactly what what he was trying to get them to sort of kind of step away from. Um, and when they chose not to, he was almost like purifying them by like killing them, uh, essentially. The whole like movie aspect that they were doing in terms of like creating this like ultimate film or whatever, I, I, that one I didn't completely sort of not understand. It was almost like a... Almost I think like, they were trying to follow on the, with the theme. Yeah, I, th- I think they were maybe trying to follow with the theme or maybe like a, a, a huge like middle finger to sort of Hollywood in terms of like sort of whatever. But that's kind of that's kind of sort of how I was viewing it in terms of sort of why the father ended up being the killer and I, I i to me i thought it was very obvious from the very start of the movie like as soon as i saw the the clip play back and i started to see what was unfolding i thought it can't be anyone else but, but the father uh, yeah. especially because they didn't really hint at it being anyone else really uh, at all in the movie so I, I i thought that reveal was maybe underwhelming just because i, I felt it was actually too too obvious but i thought I thought he did all of that to lure her back because he always said that she had some sort of evil in her. And remember the scenes where he was pretty much stalking her, especially the scene where he was literally he was watching her in that little booth where she was doing the whole, you know, shaking of the body, serenading and all yeah. of that. And then he wasn't necessarily doing anything sexual. He was just gripping his hand. So when I saw that, I said, oh, OK, so um, he's seen the life that she's living and he's angry for it. And he's obviously getting angry about that. He's he's always been angry about that. And he always, like I said, I thought he did all of that. He was killing the people around her to lure her back. So he said that she's always had evil in him. And he's killing the people around him, around her. And obviously in the situations where you're stalking her, and in that scene specifically where he's watching her serenade herself, I think all of that kind of went hand in hand. I was like, okay, cool. He's, you know, she left. He's trying to bring her back. He's seeing the life that's, that she's living. And at the end, he tries to, create a he, he tries to do an exorcist to kind of like you know you know push out all the evil once he's seen the evil because he's always he, like he said he's seen the evil now he's actually seen the evil manifest in terms of her living that you know sex industry lifestyle so yeah i thought he did all of that to kind of like lure her back pretty much so he can do the exorcist pretty much but so he's just punishing people for sin that's the entire thing it's not it's not well it's not people necessarily it's just people around her all right, so but I, I basically found that kind of underwhelming, mm-hmm. where it, it kind of seemed very basic and rote, like like you've seen characters like this many times, and I kind of didn't really get anything else out of out of that. For me, personally, I don't know. It, it, it just didn't feel like it was hand in hand, like like you said, because the motivation was a bit. Even though I do think his motivation was to lure her back so he could just do an exorcist on her because he felt like she's always had evil, and obviously he saw it. You saw it manifested in terms of actually watching her be in the sex industry and all of that. Even though, yeah, even though that was his, for me, that was his motivation, it still didn't, like, I didn't get how, like, his murderous ways didn't make sense in terms of, like, why did he choose that approach? And why now? Like, the murderous, exactly, right? yeah. He, so he doesn't like, seem to have, he doesn't seem to have done this while she was in the adult industry, right? But now that she's going into Hollywood, that's the line. That's that's where he's put yeah. it, right? Wasn't it? Wasn't he saying that, or wasn't the whole purpose of the private investigator that he hadn't known where she was, and so the private investigator was sort of trying to find him for her? Okay, so it was a coincidence that she, that he finds her just as she is about to to go into mainstream acting. Yeah. Is that just a coincidence? I th- I think that may be just a coincidence, to be honest. Okay. Because I, yeah, because he he did say something about, you know, do you think that you could hide from me from ever, for, forever or something like that? And that was the whole purpose of the private investigator to sort of kind of collect information and this and the other. And then obviously that's why the people around her are sort of being attacked because the private investigator is seeing sort of the girls that she's hanging around with, the guy that she, you know, she uh, is hanging around with and sort of you know, is staying with and this and any other. So, question. How do you guys, are you guys familiar with the nice stalker story? I know that was a serial killer who killed women in the uh, Hollywood area in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. But that's about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you guys feel that? Because um, I thought it was kind of smart. Because at first, because I, when I saw the trailer, I said, oh, okay. Because um, I didn't know how the Night Stalker story and Maxine were going to entwine. Because as, cause obviously, the Night Stalker story is the actual true story. So I was thinking, oh. So, of course, she was not in the case whatsoever. So I was thinking, okay, what, what's going to happen? Is I found it to be smart, by the way. How did you feel about the incorporation of the Night Stalker story? Because we found out that 
the killer was trying was trying to make it seem like the night stalker was doing these murders to kind of yes. hide his trial. How did you guys feel about it? Uh, I, I thought it was cool. I, I, I well, I think it what sort of was shown well as well was that there was some of the potential sort of the copycats and people that were maybe sort of you know, hiding multiple people that were hiding behind it. So you have that scene where she's walking down the alley and then the person sort of follows her behind, but then she sort of pulls out a gun and then you have one of the most flipping gruesome scenes that you see uh, in here, which was uh, made me squirm a little bit. But I I think that it was. Come back to me, come back to me on it. Come back to me on it. Because they yeah, come back to me on that one. I, I kind of thought it was a little bit tacked on because there don't, didn't seem to be a real connection other than mm. kind of reinforcing just how dangerous Los Angeles is. Mm. Right? It's just one more way where you as a young woman you can get killed, right? Like if it's not the mm. film industry, if it's not if it's not the drugs, if it's not the street violence, it's the night stalker, right? Mm. But is that mm. enough? Like I kept waiting for it to mean something or say anything mm. about any of the characters and didn't really seem to. Mm. Um, like, like one of the big criticisms I have of this movie is that everything feels a little bit floaty, that nothing really happens because of anything else, right? So the Night Stalker is going around and obviously people are talking about how dangerous it is, but nothing really happens because of the Night Stalker. And then Maxine gets cast in this movie and she gets constantly warned about how, like, what a hard ass the director is. But other than being a bit strict and demanding, nothing bad happens. Like, nobody exploits her or abuses her or even yells at her while she's in the movie industry. And in fact, everybody seems pretty nice, because everything, considering everything, and supportive. Like, even the director is ultimately trying to help her, right? She's not trying to exploit Maxine at all. And then... I don't, I don't, it, it all, all, all kind of seemed like um, it, 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 it kind of just skirted around the edges of these topics without really, uh, without really saying anything about them or, or anything interesting happening because of them. And the Night Soccer kind of was part of that, where that was kind of part of the background, but it didn't seem connected to anything. Mm. Look, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I do hear what you're saying. But... Also, is a follow-up question. Do you think um, movies are taking risks or entering danger territory when they try and play with, or play on factual events? Because the Night Stalker was a, you know, was a real, you know, was a real event. You know what I'm saying, a series of events. So the fact that they kind of incorporate that story into Maxine and, or, you know, into a fictional movie, and like you said, it didn't kind of like amount to anything. First, it didn't even amount to anything. But like you said, even though I did think it was smart that he kind of used that as a way to hide his trail. Sure. But I do agree, it didn't really amount to anything. So do you think like film productions are kind of entering that, you know, danger territory when they play on factual events, series of events, which are, you know, negative pretty much? So, I don't think there's anything um, wrong or controversial about, about, about this, about referencing these killings or setting them in the time where they happen. Um, it just, it, I was just, I, I just have to wonder why, why do it if you're not going to do anything with it, okay. right? Okay. Um, mm. that, that's kind, of, kind of my takeaway. Like the story doesn't actually change if you take it out, okay. and the see. trailer kind of makes it seem like it's about that, or the killer is the night, like she's one of the victims. Like this is the story of one of the victims of the Night Stalker, for instance, which could have been an interesting movie, maybe the one that got away or some or whatever, right? But that's not the case either, and. It just seems to be purely there to just add to the list of terrible things that are happening without actually impacting the story. I I agree. Um, I do think you know there there were things that they didn't fully flesh out in my opinion. Um, it, it seemed like they they were convey all theme points, which I appreciate. But in terms of it going anywhere, no, I don't think it did. I I, I just personally for me, I just think like this whole franchise is a bit confusing. If you want me to be honest, I think it's a bit all confusing. I did like that. I was content with my experience because, uh, you know, I was pleased with the themes and how they were conveying it. But at the same time, it was it's just a very confusing franchise in terms of like the story itself. Um, yeah, that's just my take on things. What about you, Herbie? Uh What I think they did, or kind of where they did portray 
the feeling of sort of being in Hollywood and some of the trauma within it was, uh, I don't think, you, I don't know if you remember, I sort of know in the opening when she's auditioning for uh, the movie role and they tell her to sort of look directly into the camera and sort of kind of convey trauma and this and the other. And she kind of sort of goes through a whole monologue or whatever. Uh, and then towards the end of the movie, after sort of, sort of production has been wrapped or whatever, uh, I think the director asked her to sort of like say something about like her, I can't remember exactly what was said, but it was, it was asking her to kind of like say something about sort of know what she would do next in Hollywood and this and any other. And then again, it's the whole sort of looking directly inside the camera. And this is after she, you know, she's lost all of her friends. She's lost sort of the guy that she was with, this and the other. She's sort of lost her father. And it, it's almost her sort of, it's her sort of describing about sort of continuing Hollywood, wanting to sort of um, continue progress be the biggest star or whatever but then that's also sort of the trauma trauma of being in hollywood is sort of maybe that feeling of sort of being trapped and sort of having to kind of continue despite everything that's kind of going on in your life and you know again with the director there was that one scene where it was just after her friend died and i think she was late and the director said to her don't be late again you won't be on this movie wherever like disregarding everything that i mean the director probably didn't know and maybe she said something it might it it was sort of like she couldn't feel like she could say or whatever, but she also didn't ask. Right? She didn't ask why are you late? Yeah, and yeah. and and then the answer is I I was at the mock identifying my friend's body. Should have mm-hmm. been a valid answer, but she didn't even the conversation didn't go that far. Yeah, it was a case of like you know if you're late again you're out of this movie basically and you won't be. I, the I actually followed that scene by the way because I like while well, I worked in like TV film industry right and while working in there being late was like a big big thing and like yeah. the way that they would kind of come the way that they would kind of like convey their feelings towards it and like they would say stuff like oh if you're like three times it doesn't matter what if you're late three times you're pretty much gone right and they'll say stuff like it, it doesn't matter what the reason is just get here on time there's you could always find a way to get here right so i actually understood that scene i i, I pretty much agree I, I liked how they shot that scene because i say that's actually pretty accurate like the industry they don't really care about what you're going through they just want to get their project just want to get it done yeah i think i think as well it speaks to the ruthlessness of the industry as well in terms of sort of you know the show goes on like with or without you the show's going to go on uh no matter what and also you know when they were talking about sort of i'm trying to remember the scene where i think there was like a girl that was like kind of like performing or something like that and and again it's just before sort of the scene where she looks directly into the camera uh, towards the end of the movie where they say oh what happened to sort of such and such and it's just very dismissive in terms of like oh she was never going to be a star anyways like forget what even happened to her or whatever like you're the main attraction here you're the big star so i think it does well to speak to some of the ruthlessness of the industry did this movie make any of you guys raise any questions about industry that maybe you really like maybe you're just so, you know i'm pretty sure you're familiar with the whole you know hollywood is dark right but did this kind of like add to fuel to the fire in terms of you know um hollywood pretty much and the treatment of actors and you know just treatment of people in hollywood and pretty much the dark side of the industry i actually was pretty underwhelmed about that like we just we just talked about an aspect where that rings really true but i thought if that's as bad like according to this movie that's as bad as it gets right that you are disposable and if you are late too often doesn't matter why but other other than that it it seems to be pretty professional everybody seems not exactly polite but you know mostly professional right and i was kind of expecting more to happen where just people would treat maxine just poorly and that never really Mm -hmm. happened right like like Mm -hmm. the 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 director uh, uh, elizabeth bender is really blunt and to the point and doesn't really care about anything other than getting the project done right but she also doesn't abuse anybody, right? Or, or like that, that, that's at least how it came yeah. across to me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see me. And and I was I was kind of expecting more of that, right? Especially because that's like, What's a, your like, like a, 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 abusive. Abusive or just blunt. To be fair, like if I'd say back in the day, maybe it would have been considered as blunt, but the way society is now, I'd pr- I'm pretty sure they'd report her to HR. For what specifically? Just uh, yeah. like I said, I felt it, you know. I remember the scene where um the actor asked her, you know, the blood scene where the actor asked her how she was doing or something like that, and then her response to that. I think she said something about how she pretty much was saying how she was terrible, right? In that mm-hmm. scene, 
I don't know mm-hmm. if it was in that scene or just in general, but she was pretty much saying she was terrible, right? Like, I do think, like I said, in today, like for today's society, I would consider that very abusive. I wouldn't necessarily bother me because, I, like I said, um, mm. I, I do agree that would have been just blunt. But the way what people complain about nowadays, bro, I'm telling you, a lot of people will probably refer to HR for that, you know. Sure, uh, but, but, but this is the 80s, right? And if you want to showcase yeah. how abusive and uncaring and dehumanizing Hollywood is, I was kind of expecting a more. Didn't right? they like, do that in the first scene, though? In the audition, when they asked her to show her breast? Yeah. I mean, yeah, sh- sure, yeah. But but that was also very clinical and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Like, But that's the worst that happened, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I guess I was just expecting a little bit more, and especially considering how central of a theme it is. Like, the entire movie is supposed to be about that. Like, about Hollywood being being sleazy and exploitative and, and all, all of that. And for that, there was relatively little of it. Like, there were, like, a few people, like, like for instance, the, the security guard who recognized her from the adult movies. But even he wasn't that creepy, right? He, he didn't actually do anything inappropriate other than mentioning that he recognized her. Right? You, you could have written that scene a whole lot more sleazy, right? And it seemed like, like a lot, like it was either pulling its punches, which seems a weird thing to do for this kind of movie, or it was like it didn't care to go into more detail, but that's, but then again, we have some really gruesome graphic scenes in this movie. So this doesn't seem to seem to, seem to be the kind of movie that shies away from depicting unpleasant things, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess that's that's kind of where my that's that I think that's kind of where my confusion comes from. Yeah, I I don't think that was the main theme though, because I think like the main theme was um obviously Maxine trying to hide her blood trail. Showing Hollywood was dark was definitely a theme that they were touching upon, but I don't think that was the main theme of the film. Mm. I mean, you also you also have the the theme of you know, what a willing a person's, you know, or what kind of person, you know, thrives in Hollywood or what, we, uh, you know, what Hollywood does to a person, how he changes them. You know, you, again, you see with Maxine, there's like sort of, you know, certain patterns in her behavior where she's like kind of, sort of showing selfishness or sort of lack of compassion for others in this, any other. So you have like, you know, when she's invited to the sort of, you know, up, up into the hills with some sort of the rich people by the sort of the first girl, and then she goes with another friend and they both end up dead. Uh, and I think you have yeah. later on, you have another girl that says, oh, I've been invited to this party up in sort of the same place. And instead of like warning her, she doesn't say anything. She kind of like lets her do whatever where, you know, she could have saved her. And then you also, yeah. have, you also have sort of the scene where she's with the police officers and, you know, they're saying you could help the next girl. So you could you could be the person that saves the next girl. And she's like, or they can sort of save themselves and this, that, and the other. And it's just kind of showing that kind of like, Again, that ruthlessness, that lack of compassion, and and again, yeah. all for themselves. Like, but that's that's another another that's another example of this, right? Like the police are just trying to help, and Maxine turns them away. Like yeah. she doesn't, based on what we see in this movie. Like I can I can buy that she has had bad experiences with other mm-hmm. police, right? Yeah. And she says as much, kind of. I don't talk to cops and and stuff like that. But we don't actually actually see that justified in this movie, right? Like the like the all the all the police we see in this movie are just trying to help and just trying to solve the case, and they're being rejected by Maxine, right? Who who is the one who ends up? No, but that, that... but that's like showing her character and then the lack of empathy and the lack of compassion that she's yeah. showing. And again, it's it's speaking to some of the ruthlessness and some of the self mindedness that you need to reach the top. Where she's again, her focus is on completing this movie. She doesn't want. She doesn't care about like some of the investigation. In this yeah. Movie. She doesn't no, care. Guys. About else. She just cares about herself and becoming a star and sort of completing this movie. But, but guys, uh, but if she talked to the police, then they could have ended up investigating her because she's and, murdered. And then what? What do you mean? Why well, if she killed somebody in self-defense in a different state ten years ago? Is is that why she trusts but everybody it, out? But that's the thing. I don't know necessarily. That's what I'm, that's the thing about X and Pearl because in Pearl. I don't know if that's her or if that's the granny because in Pearl it's a, granny. a bunch of it's, people. It's the old woman. Okay. I, th- I think she's played by Mia Goth as well. I think that that complicates it. But that per- okay. Pearl is is the old woman in X. But even the investigator, remember the investigator says um, that she the investigator pretty much confirms that she's killed people as well. When they remember the scene where they were at the dinner place after after um she got the letter. 
to where to meet him. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. She doesn't want it to get out, right? But that's more about the film studios not wanting to hire her if she's tied to that serial killer, mm -hmm. right? That's not about she's afraid of like like legal problems. Like she do, she doesn't care about the police finding out. She cares about potential employers finding out, and then they won't hire her, and then she can't get the career she wants. That's that's the leverage, right? Wasn't it, was that the leverage? That was uh, prison time. I basically got it as if you don't do what we say, we will leak this to every film studio in the city and then you will never work in this town again. Mm -hmm. That that was my takeaway from it. Oh crap, I might need to. <laughs> yeah. So we're getting into the weeds a little bit here, but but basically my whole my whole like to sum it all up, like my whole takeaway in all of this is kind of the movie kind of takes it for granted that you kind of go along with that scenario, but it doesn't actually show it, right? It talks about how um, how how exploitative the movie industry is, but it, but nobody ever tries to exploit Maxine, right? And I think one of the examples of this is the Bates Motel, where she uh, encounters the the set for Bates Motel, and it's supposed to mean something, but I don't know that it does exactly. It's just supposed to feel important. I don't know. Did, did any of you get what that was about? No. So that was the hot the the, the hotel from um, Psycho. Right, one of the most mm -hmm. famous horror movies at mm -hmm. the time, shot twenty like fifteen years or so before before the movie takes place. I think sixty nine, and this is ninety five. And Maxine treats it as if it was a really profound thing. And like there's a little bit of a voiceover about how it's a symbol of how repressive repressed Hollywood used to be, because because of the twist ending in Psycho. Um, that kind of played on the sensibilities of 1960s um, audiences. But is that it? Is that is that the entire thing? And if it's not, then it seems to add kind of to the list of things that the movie doesn't really explore or justify or do anything with. It just it's just purely vibes. I, I don't think it's like purely vibes completely. No, not the movie in general. No, not not like not. I th I think the movie as a whole. I don't think like the themes in there are just purely vibes. I think they're just like. They're subtle and they don't hit you over the head with some of the, some of the messaging. And I I think what what you sort of know is the case here. It's trying to sort of tread the line as to sort of being too heavy handed and maybe not doing enough to sort of kind of like give the audience enough to go off of. I actually thought it was very heavy handed. Like yeah. like the director is just a pure exposition machine, right? Like mm. everything she says is just explaining the movie to the audience. Right. And that is one of those areas where she just explains mm. that, you know, audiences back then were not ready for Psycho and Hollywood is about pushing envelopes and sometimes mm. you push too far and uh, and, you know, you can't you, you can't make an egg or make an omelet without breaking some eggs. And like she doesn't say that, but figuratively. Right. Like it's not subtle in that in that way. Right. My question is just does it do enough with that subject matter or does it kind of just skirt around it? And does that like like to me that really brought on the movie because it kind of just glanced in the direction of the topic it was trying to talk about but it didn't the story didn't really didn't really unfold within those themes right like we don't really see Maxine do anything like like at the, at the earlier we mentioned about how if you want to su succeed in Hollywood you have to become a monster yeah. but we don't see Maxine become a monster right but we or, see, or, we, or we be see, tempted to become one she doesn't become a monster I mean. From from kind of like what I've read is that she's become again a little bit more hardened from her experience in sure. the original X movie in terms of sort of, you know where I, again the, uh, Jonathan you've you've seen it a little bit more than I have uh, or you've seen it in, in a lot more depth where she isn't sort of, you know the character that would if someone's chasing her in the alley she wouldn't be the one that sort of you know, pulls out a gun and sort of makes you know kind of forces that person to do sort of you know ludax with the gun and sort of to strip and this any other it doesn't seem like she was that in, initial person back in in x and it's, it's kind of showing again the growth in her character in terms of like she's being a lot more hardened she's like you know being a little bit more sort of no cynical in this any other in in the world is it's kind of what i got from it oh yeah she definitely is but not but that's not related to the movie industry right not related, not completely related to the movie industry, but then again, it kind of ties back into what kind of person sort of, would survive, would thrive, or would sort of, sure. uh, would excel in that particular sort of in Hollywood, essentially, and what character traits do they need and just any other. But do we see her need those character traits to succeed? No, which is where, which is where like, I, 
like I, I agree with you. I, I, I did say in, in the initial reaction that I think the third act completely sort of no lets the movie down because I don't I like, I'm, I agree with you. I don't think it completely follows through with sort of no, everything that it was maybe like introducing, talking about, or setting up, and this any other. I, I, I think it just kind of it, it, it misses the mark on that point. So I, I don't think we disagree too, too, too much on it. But I do feel like there are stuff there. There, there are sort of no, some, some things there that, that sort of kind of point towards some of the subject matter that's introduced. Well, it's, it's, it's definitely a harsh world, right? And she needs to be tough to survive in this world and, and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm just zeroing in on the um, ho on the Hollywood aspect because it's such a big part of the story, right? We're constantly told what a harsh business it is, but we see it, we don't see it being harsh to her. We're, we're talked about how inhuman it is, but we don't, it's, we don't see it really abuse anybody. Like they're very careless about that one actress dying, right? But most, but it's more indifference than anything else. We're talking about how Hollywood wants to start, like depends on artists pushing boundaries, mm -hmm. but then is scared of, of artists at the same time, but we don't really see that happening, right? We don't really see studio interference trying to kind of put shackles on the Puritan, right? Mm -hmm. Like where Elizabeth Bender, the, the film director, is trying to do one thing, but then there's a studio executive who's trying to put her into a box or something. like. Yeah. It, like it, it gets talked about a lot, but it doesn't seem to really actually happen. And Maxine seems to have a pretty good deal at the film production, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think she's too sort of hard done by. And again, I, I think I agree with what you said is that her character trait isn't being sort of you know, used within sort of the film industry in terms of like some of the ruthlessness and stuff like that. So I, I, I do agree in that sense. Mm. Well, maybe the reason why she wasn't so hard done by the industry is because they already know where she's coming from. So I don't think it can get it can get any tougher than the environment that she already came from. Does that make sense? So maybe oh, you, can, you you can imagine all sorts of scenes where she gets gets treated more harshly or gets exploited more or whatever, right? And this mm. doesn't seem like the kind of movie that shies away from that. Like it's not the kind of movie that has to allude to it but can't show anything because it shows a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah. that's kind of just what I'm, and, and I think this is really central to the movie as well, right? Because it's this whole triangulation of this topic of exploitation from the Hollywood angle, from the street angle, from the politicized faith angle, right? All of these things kind of, and from the morality angle as well, um, all of those things kind of circle this idea. And so I don't think it's a small detail as, uh, at all. And then we earlier mentioned the religious aspect as well, right? Like, did we think yeah. that that was integrated in this story well? No, I don't, not, not completely. Um, for me, no. Just like I said, it, 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 it's not that it didn't make sense. It just felt, it felt forced. It, what, what yeah, forced? It, it felt forced. As it, like, for example, like, it, the whole leading up to an exorcist and his reasoning just felt a bit weak. You know what I'm saying? Like I, mm. like I said, I thought the reason why he was killing all those people was to lure her back. But yeah, just the reasoning for all of it just felt very weak. Like, okay, you're gonna kill all these people, which is a sin. And I get it, like cults have a dark side to them. So obviously the link between a cult and Christianity, I understand why that would kind of justify the killing because obviously he's still kind of like a cult, right? So I understand, but just the reasoning for what he was doing wasn't strong enough for me. Yeah. And I, I, I think as well is that you don't feel the protests enough in this movie. Uh, and again, it, it's impact on some of the wider story and some of the, the film development and stuff like that. I, 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 well, I personally didn't feel it was sort of, you know, present enough or front of mind because in, in terms of like the religious aspect of it outside of, sort of you know, outside of that, it kind of makes sense why there's a lack of it during sort of the majority of the movie because, you know, she's in an industry where sort of, you know, religion isn't really like, the biggest thing she's uh she's in the porn industry as well and like it's just, it's just like not it doesn't seem to be like such a big thing in that in that particular world obviously you had you know the religious sort of no, the religious symbolism when sort of no, the killings were happening with sort of the night the night stalker and sort of the slashings and stuff like that but yeah i, I don't feel I, I feel like where they probably maybe missed the mark a little bit on that and maybe put something sort of pushing that a little bit further and sort of kind of showing the contrast uh of some sort of the hollywood world was just kind of having a greater impact from the processes of the movies and you know, Hollywood maybe like stealing people's children and this and any other and so you know, uh you know people people maybe even being affected by the sin and this and any other or even like even showing someone who's maybe lost their kid to sort of 
Charles to Hollywood or whatever like that, you know, being a little bit more forefront in the movie just to kind of show the different position. I mean, the protesters were clearly supposed to be in the wrong, right? They're supposed to be the narrow minded, backwards looking, kind of st trying to stifle other people's expression and creativity, right? That was kind of the like that, that was just showing that this climate exists and that yeah. these movies are pushing against boundaries and that there's people who are upset about that, right? Yeah. Um, but then again, they're mm -hmm. kind of lumped in thematically with the killer as well, right? Because he's kind of he's got the same motivation, mm -hmm. right? He's trying to stop the sin, right? That's what it kind of comes down to. At least that's what he says. And it does kind of fall into theme of, you know, perversion in terms of like, you know, how humans a lot, they, a lot of the times they pervert a lot of things. So they pervert religion, they pervert sex. So I, yeah, that's something which I can commend them for in terms of, you know, how, you know, Christianity was perverted and it falls in line with obviously, you know, poor industries or how that's perverted as well. So, um, yeah, I can commend it for in that, in retrospect. Yeah. Uh, even like, and again, even though I think the third act was, poorly handled in in uh in respect I, I think it it does kind of show a good contrast between you know the protesters in terms of sort of you know, them just like kind of like being there making a bit of noise in this any other and then sort of, you know maybe the more extremists that are willing to sort of go a step further and actually take action uh in, in terms of sort of you know, their their displeasure with sort of you know, all this all the sin that's happening um in hollywood yeah, the, the protesters are more of a nuisance than anything, right? They don't actually do anything. They no. kind of just stand in the way for a bit. Yeah. Whereas, whereas the killer is actually taking action, is actually destroying people for these convictions, right? Mm -hmm. Did we think the killer was sincere about that or was there something else going on? Because again, I've, I've not seen X, right? I don't really know what the actual background is. But if you kind of take just take what the like the killer's monologue at face value it seems a bit self-serving and a bit uh like a performance but i don't know about enough about the character to know if he's sincere in that or if it's a pretense or something else and like if this is just personal and he's just looking for a way to express that or if he's if he's really just trying to put an end to the sin i just think he's just mentally unstable like i said his motivation didn't seem um real enough um i think his i think his um, introduction into this film well his, his pretty much his input into this film was kind of just to show where the root of maxine's um evil where that kind of comes from um because remember even the scene where they were face to face and then he must have they're having that, that little heart to heart before she blew his head off said something about um it's it's not your fault for the pretty much saying it's not your fault for the way that i am or something like that so i think um in terms of if he was being sincere or not i i don't think i think he was just mentally unstable and he was just you know they, it was just a dysfunctional family he was just there to kind of like show where you know the evil behind maxine came from what you said where the evil behind maxine came from what do you mean by that you know what I'm get okay. You know, I think you guys need to watch X and Pearl because yeah, it, it's hard to talk about like, this movie without having done that, right? Which uh, kind of okay, kind okay. of goes towards like that. It's hard. Like this, this, this movie relies a lot on having seen the other movies, but it's also not direct. Like it's not X Part Three, right? That that makes it a weird, like sort of semi sequel kind of thing. And I understand it's intended as a conclusion to the trilogy. But I think a lot of people are going to see this movie not having seen the others, not being aware of the connection, right? And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and at least in the first two thirds, the story seems to work as a standalone, right? Like we like you, at one point she has a like a traumatic flashback to the events of the first movie, right? But you can see you can get from context, okay, she survived some horrible things, a trauma, uh, traumatic thing that has that is stuck with her and that she's bottled up deep inside in order to move on with her life. But you don't really need to know at that point all the details of what happened, right? Other than she has had a traumatic experience and she's tried to move past it, not really successfully. But then at honest, the end, I, yeah. I, I wasn't getting that. I was so confused for a long time. Even like when they yeah. kept introducing this girl, again, going to I would not seen the first one. I was just like, who is this and why had she killed her? I, I, I didn't know that she'd survived like, you know, a, a slasher trying to sort of kind of kill her and maybe all her friends. I see any other. I was, I was so confused at that part and I just wanted some answers and I actually didn't think I, I didn't get answers to it in the end but mm -hmm. again granted I'm watching the third film in the in the trilogy so it's more my fault than yeah. the director's maybe and 
the reason why I say, um, you know, she had like some, you know, she had evil in her is because the crazy lady, the in the X movie, there were similarities between her and Pearl. So pressure pretty much, you know, she, you know, she looked like her. There was, so there was like, yeah. So like I said, there was a heavy infl- um, similarities between the two. So I think in X, from what I could remember, you saw that there was murderous tendencies in Pearl, and I think that was portrayed at the end. From what I can remember, so that's why I'm saying, like, you know, her dad, you know, um, was pretty much doing this. You know, her dad was the manifestation of her evilness. So, so yeah, that's why I said that. But I'm, I'm still confused with, um, whether or not Pearl. Okay, so okay, so okay, so Pearl is pretty much the old lady. Okay, cool. Sorry, because I'm just trying to link everything together. That's why I sound very discombobulated. But, but yeah, I'm trying to put all the stories together and figure out how they actually connect because there's certain things in Maxine that happened that told me that you know she's it's not just her trying to escape from the sex industry she's trying to escape escape from blood and murder as well so that's why I'm a bit confused on yeah I was just a bit confused and yeah but hopefully that made sense what I was trying to say yeah but but what I, what I was getting at was that like it's it's clear that something like that happened in her past right but then the, I, I don't. The, like the killer just seems to come out of out of nowhere. It's kind of it's kind of my thing, and I'm not sure how much that makes sense. Even if you've seen X, I think that's kind of what it all hinges on, right? Because mm. if if this is just up the payoff to something that was set up in X, then that's that's probably that's that's better, right? Or that's fine. Whereas I'm not sure it is, but yeah, we, we've we've played with that point now. Um, well, actually, wait, highlights. Was there any highlight moments in this film for you guys? I touched on it before. Was just that scene where it kind of called back to you know, her first audition where she's kind of like staring down the camera and she's kind of giving the monologue and it's kind of just showing the trauma of living in Hollywood. And again, it, it kind of shows like the facade as well in terms of, you know, she's having all this traumatic stuff happening behind closed doors, you know, in her, in her private life. But then when she's kind of, you know, for facing the camera or whatever or she's like kind of like portraying her hollywood self you can see that her hair's done up you know she doesn't look sort of as like raggedy as she does uh in sort of uh most of the movie she's all like kind of like presenting her best self she's sort of kind of like again talking about wanting to continue wanting to sort of live this sort of fantastic life in hollywood but behind that there's like so much trauma and so much sort of hurt that's going on behind it and i just think that was like a brilliant callback and they also call all of Hollywood a facade, right? Like where they're driving lit- through literal facades, like yeah. of these these fake towns that mm-hmm. are used as backdrops for movies, like or as movie sets, right? So that was another pretty obvious symbolism, right? That all of Hollywood is just fake. Mm-hmm. And so anybody, and, and when you join Hollywood, you become fake, right? And then there's also this callback where every time she goes to perform, she takes cocaine first, right? Yeah. And and she does it twice, once at the start of the movie when she's getting ready for the adult shoot. And then at the end when she uh, goes on the talk show, I think, right, to talk about her, like she, they, she also takes um, some cocaine. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's identical, right, the way she prepares for each performance, mm-hmm. which kind of, again, pretty obviously implies that they're kind of fundamentally the same. Mm-hmm. That despite all of this, she's ended up where she started. Yeah, I actually, yeah, that's actually quite good. For me, it was the scene right before the police officer died where he touched the Hollywood sign. Obviously, you saw blood um, left on the Hollywood sign after he let go. For me, that, was, that kind of was like metaphoric in terms of like, you know, Hollywood comes with blood, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I kind of like that as well. There's many interpretations of what that could mean in terms of... Well, well it's, almost, it's almost as subtle as when... Uh, the director takes the fake blood, smears it on the actress's face, and then says, "Now we all have blood on our hands." Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. That that yeah. that was similarly subtle. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so it's yeah yeah. So this movie is kind of full of full of these kinds of things. I think we're at the stage where last thoughts and ratings. For me, I think this comes down to a somewhere between five out of eight and five out of nine, mostly because it looks really nice. It, it's got this great feel, the vibes are all correct. But, and then not much happens. Like that's kind of my takeaway from it. And that's kind of why I, I kept going on about 
the, the symbolism being kind of empty and the themes being kind of not really explored because I think that's kind of the bottom line of this movie, right? That it talks about a bunch of things in a pretty obvious way, but then doesn't really take it anywhere. And I think it does that on not just once or twice, but on several fronts, which is a shame because everything else just looks really nice and individual scenes can be pretty impactful. But I'm just, just wondering what's the story exactly, which actually reminds me quite a bit of Civil War, which was similar, where every individual scene is pretty good. And then you ask, okay, but what's the story? So, and that was also an A24 movie. I don't, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if that's a coincidence. That's, but it's, it's actually, yeah. I think Love Lies Bleeding as well, for anyone that's watched out there, is also an A24 movie. And it, it falls, it, it kind of has the same pitfalls as well, where <laughs> all the scenes are great, but I don't think it really amounts to telling any particular kind of story. Mm, I think it may have needed focus. Where it says, okay, like, it, I mean, it kind of has focus, right? It's kind of about Maxine gets hired gets, for her first real acting role and is trying to make that work, where at the same time a killer is after her, right? That's not a terribly complex story, but mm. it still manages to not really do that somehow. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure how. It, it, it I think it just doesn't, that. it doesn't intertwine the two things. Yeah. The, the, you know, the few different sort of kind of like story beats well enough. Well, for me, um, I think this was a confusing but good end to a series. Well, uh, you know, in terms of Maxine Pearl X, what about flipping name is? <laughs> in regards to her story, I think it was a, like I said, it was a, it was a good ending, a content ending for me. I liked the themes that they do, they touch upon to kind of like you know, show the dark side of the industry as well as try incorporating that with you know Maxine's story and you know just just how she kind of dealt with it and how she kind of moved you know I just how she moved in the industry and just her conveyal of her representation and conveyal of what it's like to be an actress in the industry of course it wasn't fully fledged out and she wasn't received like we did touch upon points like you know Daniel you mentioned that you know she didn't really receive the type of abuse that you thought she would have received especially during those times but um I do you know I commend them for them trying and I commend them for kind of like you know showing the dark side of it of course love the aesthetics just love A24 look all their movies just look marvelous. I just love their look. But um, overall, I'd say I was content with this film, and I'd give it a solid six point five out of ten. Yeah, I think I think it's like hard to not agree with what you guys have said about this movie. I will say it was it was gruesome. I know I know we didn't you know really like touch on that too much. Um, but it it was like gruesome. Had like some like really good sort of kind of like core in there. A lot of good performances as well from all the actors uh, in this movie. I know, I, I know we didn't touch on Ethan Hawke's character, the private investigator, sort of too much in, in this, but he was, you know, equally fantastic. Anytime he was on screen, he had like so much charisma, kind of like, you know, stole. So I've never seen that he was in. And yeah, like not, not too much to add to kind of like what you guys have said so far. So just as a sort of final verdict, I would I would give it a 7 out of 10. I know the, the final act is kind of maybe all over the place, doesn't tie anything up well enough but i think i enjoyed it i enjoyed it enough i enjoyed what so i enjoyed the first two acts enough to kind of cover up the third act so yeah hi all right then well guys hopefully you enjoyed today's discussion uh have a yeah don't forget to like share subscribe run up the algorithm for us to make sure that you're engaging with us so that we can reach new audiences and continue to grow Guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's discussion. And yeah, we will catch you next week. Au revoir. Ciao. Bye-bye.